स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया let us now move ahead with another topic and another point of discussion namely the generalization of euler lagrange equation okay so uh, i call this as case c so what i am going to discuss in this third case is extensions of euler lagrange equations or in short i would like to generalize my euler lagrange equations in in uh, uh, for higher for functions for for functionals containing integrands having higher derivatives right and several other generalizations which we will see one by one right so so under this let us look at the first type of generalization let me call this as case 1 Uh, so in this case we look at functionals containing higher order derivatives so functionals so so functionals functionals containing higher order derivatives right okay so so in this case uh so so points that are to be noted that we can certainly extend our result uh, of the euler lagrange equation to functions which are the integrands of the functionals and which contains higher order derivatives let's say derivatives like y double prime y triple prime and so on so forth right so euler lagrange equations euler lagrange equations can be extended can be extended to functionals can be extended to functionals with higher with higher order can be extended to functionals with higher order derivatives right and further further if we consider well further the another issue that we have to consider is mo the moment we are considering higher order derivatives our function space will be restricted so instead of looking instead of searching for our extremal in c2 of x0 y x0 x1 we have to look at c3 or c4 and so on and so forth right so our function from which the extremal comes out the function space must be must be restricted must be restricted to account to account for higher order account for higher order derivatives right okay so let us now consider the functional let us now consider the function uh, functional of the form jy the simplest possible example in this category so jy is from x0 to x1 of f of x comma y comma y prime comma y double prime so we have now a function containing derivatives up to second order right oh okay so the moment we introduce uh, extremals having derivatives continuous derivatives up to second order we have to provide extra set of boundary conditions that is now my x my boundary conditions are as follows my fixed point boundary conditions are y of x0 is y0 y at x1 is y1 and y prime x0 is y prime0 and y prime at x1 is y prime1 right so these are my boundary conditions and which means now earlier we were assuming that the extremal y had continuous partial derivatives up to second order 
now we are going to assume that the extremals y will have continuous partial derivatives up to third order or in other words y comes from the space c4 okay so let me show how is it possible okay so what we have is the following assume assume f has continuous partial partial derivative f has continuous partial derivative derivatives up to third order right uh, third order with respect to our variables so with respect to the variables x y y prime uh, y double prime as well and this means that y must come from c4 of x naught x1 why c4 because this is equivalent to saying that y double derivative must come from c2 of x naught x1 right because we have derivatives of y up to second second order and we need for our euler lagrange derivation of euler lagrange equation we need the variable with the highest order highest derivative to be at least c2 or the variable that we have y must be c4 right okay so then so then we have to we have to rewrite so rewrite our function space so now my s becomes the following following set of functions so it contains all y in c4 of x0 x1 such that such that y of x0 is y0 y of x1 is y1 uh, uh, y of y prime of x0 is y0 y prime of x1 is y1 right and our perturbation set h is eta also in c4 of x0 x1 such that eta of x0 is eta of x1 is eta prime x0 is also eta prime x1 is also equal to 0 so the in the, the perturbation set is such that the values as well as the values of the first derivative at the boundary points they vanish right so with this we are ready to describe our euler lagrange or equation or the necessary condition for the existence of the extremal okay so suppose well to do that let us now number some of the equations so let me call this this equation that we began with as 1 okay so suppose suppose 1 1 has a local a local extrema right it has a local extrema at let's say at the function y which is in s and let us say that the perturbation to this extrema is y hat which is given by which is given by y is equal y hat is equal to y plus epsilon eta right so this is my perturbation to this function right so from regular taylor series expansion from taylor series expansion i can rewrite my integrand in 1 which is f of at at the perturbed value which is f of x comma y hat comma y hat prime comma y hat double prime in terms of the value at the extremal point or at the extremal function so this is also equal to f at x comma y plus epsilon eta comma y prime plus epsilon eta prime comma y double prime plus epsilon eta double prime right we further see that once we use taylor series we we get to the point where this is also equal to f of x comma y comma y prime comma y double prime plus epsilon uh, eta the first order terms are as follows del f del y plus eta prime del 
f del y prime. Notice that the first, first these two terms are identical to our derivation of Euler Lagrange in the standard case. But now we have an additional term which is eta double prime del f del y double prime, right? That comes from the fact that now f is also a function of y double prime, right? And plus I ignore the higher order terms, right? So, plus higher order terms, right? I do not care about the higher order terms for epsilon sufficiently small, okay? So, which means which means that my variation in the functional which is which is j of y hat minus j of y will be the necessary integration and after plugging in the values of the integrand via the Taylor series we get that up to first order the right hand side becomes integral from x 0 to x 1 eta del f del y plus eta prime del f del y prime plus eta double prime del f del y double prime, right. So, times times d x plus order epsilon square times, right. Okay. So, then we do redo the exercise that we did in the standard Euler Lagrange case that is we, we changed we are going to change this second, this second and the third term using integration by parts and then we apply the boundary condition. So, notice that this particular quantity, this particular quantity is also equal to negative of integral of d d x of del f del y prime, right. This is coming, this is coming due to integration integration by parts and using using the boundary condition that is the perturbations eta they vanish at the boundary right and finally this one again we have in the, in the in the third term we have to do integration by parts twice and again use boundary condition all the four boundary conditions to arrive at the point that this integral is eta times d d x 2 of del 2 f del y y double prime of d x right of x naught to x 1 and finally, we substitute all these terms in this integral expression to see that this is also equal to it is also equal to epsilon times uh, epsilon times uh, x naught to x 1 times the integral integral of eta times del f del y minus d d x of del f del y prime plus plus d d x square of del f del y double prime right times d x. Okay. So, we see that the extremal Again, we, we use a similar variation of lemma 2 that we showed in our lecture 2 to come to the fact that, well, we must have that the extremal is 0 provided this variation is 0 or which means that this variation must be 0 for epsilon sufficiently small. And from here, we come to the fact that using, I must say that using the generalized, the generalized lemma lemma 2 in discussed in our lecture number 2 we arrive at the fact that this quantity inside the bracket will be 0 right we arrive as at the fact let me denote this bracketed quantity as e of x which is also identically equal to del f del y minus d dx del f del y prime plus the second derivative with respect to x of del f del y double prime this is set equal to 0. So, this is the extension of the Euler Lagrange equation for functions containing derivatives up to second order. We call this extended Euler Lagrange as 
Euler Poisson Euler Poisson equation I denote it in shorthand notation as EP equation. So, the extended Euler Lagrange equations for functions containing higher order derivatives are also known as Euler Poisson equations. Okay. So, let us look at an example uh, in this situation. Okay. So, let us look at this particular example. So, I am given and I am asked to find the extremal I am asked to find the extremal for j which is given by the integral from 0 to 1 which is y double prime square minus 2 rho y of dx where rho is a constant where rho is a constant and y of 0 is equal to y prime 0 is equal to y of 1 right I am. So, these are my boundary conditions is equal to y prime 1 is equal to 1. So, these are my 4 sets of boundary conditions. So, we have to find the extremal for this functional. Notice that this functional contains derivatives up to second order and, and my Euler Lagrange equation or my ex generalized Euler Lagrange or Euler Poisson equation the E p equation it reduces to after plugging in this this expression for f right in Euler Poisson we see that my equation reduces to the following fourth order O d e or differential ordinary differential equation which has which has the solution of the form which has the solution of the form y of x is equal to rho by 4 factorial x to the power 4 plus c 1 x cube plus c 2 x square plus c 3 x plus c 4 right. Okay. So, so c i's c i's are constants. Okay. So, c i's are constants. So, so using all these we have 4 constants and we have 4 boundary conditions here. So, we can very conveniently eliminate all these unknowns of the problem. So, if we use the fact that the the first of the two boundary conditions y of 0 is y prime 0 is equal to 0, we see that this is also equal to c 3 gives us c 3 is equal to c 4 is equal to 0. Further, if we use the fact that y 1 is equal to y 1 prime is equal to 0 the set of the other two sets of boundary condition we get that c 1 comes out to be negative 1 plus rho by 12 and c 2 comes out to be 2 plus rho by 24 right. It is all about a matter of algebra to solve all these constants and finally, my expression for the extremal is the following polynomial. So, this is a fourth order polynomial containing x to the power 4 plus uh, this constant times x cube plus this second constant times x square and we do not have any factors of x and the constant factor. So, this is my extremal to this fourth order functional. Okay. So, that completes the solution to this example. Okay. So, so, let us look at some specific cases in this generalized scenario. So, there are two specific cases I want to highlight. Let me call this as A and B. The first case is if my functional, if my functional, if my functional j of y does not contain y does not contain y explicitly does not contain y explicitly then my Euler Poisson my Euler Poisson reduces to the following equation. I get that this is also equal to d d x of del f del y double prime minus minus del f del y prime is equal to a constant right. It comes via the direct uh, removing certain unnecessary terms where we have involved derivatives of y 
and then integrating once to get to come to this point, right. So, instead of solving a fourth order OD, we are solving a second order OD, right, or a third order OD in this case, okay. The second, the second uh, special case is if my if my functional j of y, j of y does not, does not contain, does not contain x explicitly, does not contain x explicitly, then my, my Euler Poisson reduces to the generalized Beltrami identity. So, in this case my Beltrami, so I have this is the case where we have the generalized Beltrami identity to be satisfied, which is basically this following function h of y, y prime, y double prime, which is also equal to y double prime del f del y double prime minus y prime times times d d x of del f del f del y double prime minus del f del y prime minus f, right. Okay, so, this is all set equal to a constant. So, that is my generalized Beltrami identity that we instead solve in this special case. Again, this is a reduced order Euler Poisson equation. Okay, so, so let us look at an example, another example in this uh, in this discussion let us extremize this functional so i have j of y is equal to integral from x0 to x1 integral of 1 plus y prime square whole square divided by y double prime dx right so we see that we do not have an explicit dependence on y in this particular integrand. So, we this particular integrand falls under the case scenario A, right. So, what we can do is, so, so what we see is no explicit, explicit dependence on y, right. So, what we see is that now that my Euler Lagrange or my Euler Poisson equation reduces to this underlined expression, which is d d x of del f del y double prime minus del f del y prime is equal to a constant, right. So, once we plug in all the values of the expression, we should be able to solve. However, there is a further simplification that we can perform. Notice that this integrand is also independent of any x. So, there is no explicit x dependence on this integrand, which means that we can also use the Beltrami identity, right. So, so what we said is the following, right. So, since, since no explicit, explicit x dependence, We, we can use the Beltrami identity h of y prime comma y double prime is given by y double prime del f del y double prime minus y double prime d d x of del f del y prime y double prime minus del f del y prime minus f is equal to the constant c 2, right. So, this is my Beltrami identity and further in the previous slide we have seen that this particular quantity is a constant. Let me call this as c 1, right. So, this particular quantity in the bracket is nothing but equal to c 1 from the previous slide, right. So, what I have is the following equation to be satisfied y double prime del f del y double prime minus y prime c 1 minus f is equal to c 2, okay. So, this equation is relatively easy to solve. 
all I have to do is to plug the value of f. So, when we do that, we see that we get the following expression. So, we have simplified the expression now 2 minus 2 times 1 plus y prime square whole square divided by divided by y double prime minus y prime c 1 minus y prime c 1 is equal to c 2. So, that is the simplified expression. Okay. So, then then let us now let us now say that this is k 1 which is minus c 1 by c 2 and let us say my k 2 is. So, I am introducing two sets of new constants. So, my kappa 1 is negative c 1 by c 2. Uh, well, the more convenient constant will be minus c 1 by 2 and the second constant we can introduce kappa 2 to be c 2 by 2. right? So, when we do that, uh, we have to further well this particular equation, let me call this as, as star, this is as such not very easy to solve. The way we are going to solve is, we are again going to solve it parametrically right? or we are going to find y as a function of a parameter and x as a function of the same common parameter and that will be our final solution. right? So, so we solve uh, uh, we, 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 we are going to solve. So, let me just first rewrite this expression in terms of this new constants. So, I see that my new uh, equation is is y double prime times kappa 1 of y prime plus kappa 2 divided by 1 plus y prime square whole square is equal to 1. Let me call this as double star. right? So, so we solve we solve double star parametrically, we solve double star parametrically from now on by assuming by again assuming that y prime is equal to tan psi. right? So, this is the starting assumption for our parametric solution. right? So, so, which means which means that which means that my quantity 1 plus y prime square is secant square theta. right? Okay. And further we also have second derivative of y with respect to x. So, we need to find out with respect to psi. Right? So, so, my second derivative of y with respect to x is secant square psi times uh, times uh, times psi prime because, because my y prime was tan psi. So, all I had to do was to differentiate this, this underlined expression just once. Right? So, we got y double prime. So, we are able to, we are now in a position to substitute all the quantities in the Cartesian frame in terms of this parameter psi. So, we see that, uh, we see that my double star can be, my double star expression can be reduced to the following form kappa, kappa 1 cos psi sin psi plus kappa 2 cos square psi times psi prime is equal to 1. right? So, after substituting all these expressions for y double prime 1 plus y prime square and y prime in my expression double star, I am going to get the following expression in completely in terms of psi which I can integrate. I can let me call this as uh, let me call this as triple star. I can integrate. I can integrate triple star to to come to a point where I can find the solution. Notice that this prime is derivative of psi with respect to x. So I can integrate and find the x coordinate by integrating triple star. So we see that x comes out to be 
the following expression kappa 3 plus plus 2 kappa 2 psi plus kappa 2 sin of 2 psi minus kappa 1 cos of 2 psi. Let me call this as 4 star, right. So, I integrate and we see that this is my 4 star, ok. So, I have found, I have found my expression for x. To find the expression of y, note, note that I had y prime was equal to tan, was equal to tan psi, right. So, this gives me that dy is equal to tan, is equal to tan psi dx. So, dy is equal to tan psi dx or just substituting differentiating x with respect to psi, we, we can easily get this quantity dx. We see that dy, so well I need to keep renaming these expressions. So, essentially we are going to use, we are going to use this 4 star. So, using using 4 star to substitute this dx and then we integrate, we integrate with respect to psi, I can get the final expression for y, y comes out to be kappa 4 plus 2 kappa 1 psi minus 2 kappa 2. So, I am just giving the solution to this problem. Students are expected to go through all the steps and do the integration. This is not a very difficult integration to perform. Plus kappa 1 sin 2 psi, right. And uh, let me just denote it as 5 star, ok. So, which means, which means that the solution is given by 5 star and 4 star here, ok. So, so, my 4 star and 5 star are my parametric, my parametric solution given by x of psi comma comma y of psi, right, ok. So, we, we are going to end the discussion in this lecture by, by, by mentioning one important result, namely that the Euler Poisson equation can be further generalized for functionals containing integrands of higher and higher derivative. So, so what I meant to say is the following, let us look at this most general case, right. The most general case is j of y is integral x naught to x 1, f of x comma y comma y prime, y double prime and so on. Let us say up to y nth derivative, the function integrand contains y, the derivatives up to the order n of dx, right. So, the extremal, my extremal y satisfies, my extremal y satisfies the Euler Poisson equation which is of this following form. Notice that this conveniently reduces to the Euler Lagrange as well as the Euler Poisson equation for functionals containing derivatives up to second order. So, this is the general version of Euler Poisson. So, this is my general Euler Poisson, ok. So, let me rewrite this expression. So, this is this minus 1 to the power n minus 1, the n minus 1th derivative of x with respect, uh, derivative with respect to x of del f del y n minus 1 and so on so forth, right. The last quantity that we will have is the derivative of partial of f with respect to y and this is set equal to 0, right. So, this is my generalized Euler Poisson for functions containing derivatives of any order, right. So, let us now, let us now end this lecture session and let us uh, end this session by mentioning that we have several other, uh, several other ways to generalize the Euler Poisson. Namely, how about 
looking at the case where we have multiple dependent variables or we have multiple independent variables. We will see that those sort of equations frequently arise in continuum mechanics, especially in planetary motion as well as standard Newtonian mechanics. So, thank you for listening for this lecture. Thank you very much.